So welcome back to another episode, or for the if you're here for the first time, welcome to the Huge Boob Corner, a show that is a breast of fresh air. And I would just like to say, if you like the show, please make sure to like, subscribe, share. It really helps uh, it just to help the show grow. So and for all of you that have been doing that, I really appreciate it. So thank you. And today, my guest is somebody who I am super, super excited about. She's somebody who, when I first started doing the show, I thought, man, she'd be an amazing guest. She's like a dream guest. So luckily enough, I was able to to make contact with her, get her, you know, and, and she seemed interested. So I was very, very, and I'm, so I'm very thankful for that. She is a veteran, gorgeous performer, and she has spectacular boobs, really spectacular boobs, <laughs> Miss Ryan Connor. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Oh, you're welcome. So I, again, I really, really appreciate the fact that you're, I'm, I'm so glad because I didn't even know that you were going to be at AVN yeah. and I just, and when I saw you, I was like, <laughs> oh man, I got it. I got to go. Cause I'm not the best at advertising where I'm going to be and what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm really horrible. I, I had a publicist for a while and I probably should go back to that because, uh, I'm not the best at that. Yeah. No, well, some people it's <laughs> surprise. It, were, were you, were, how many days were you there? Uh, three. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I just because, well, again, I was just wandering around and then I saw you and I was like, oh, if I don't at least try to, you know, make contact, make, yeah, mm-hmm. make the pitch and and then just introduce myself. So, but you were really kind and and I really appreciate that. So, again, boob interview. Yeah, I'm yeah, there. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's, well, you qualify. I can do this. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> so, all right. So wh- why don't we get it? So you want to give a little bit of kind of a, you know, your history in the adult industry? Oof. 25 years. I started 1999. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Been a minute. Been a minute. <laughs> um, it's funny, too, because when I started, I did not think that this was a career. Really? Yeah. I I just, I had a three-year-old daughter, and I thought, um, this is a great job. I can be the mom and the dad. It's mm-hmm. fantastic. It was a godsend to me, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I never thought that this would last. and And I never thought that I was famous. It never occurred to me. Uh-huh. Until the the first time I went to an AVN and walked the red carpet, I was nominated for Best New Starlet, and I'm like, "Holy shit! There are there's a lot of people here. Yeah. <laughs> there's a whole red carpet. Yeah. There's a whole aisle to walk down." Back then, it used to be at the Sands. Yeah, I remember that when oh it was part God, of CBS. Oh my God, it was amazing. Yeah, and we would walk through the Venetian uh, Casino to go down that one hallway all yeah. the way down to the Sands. And um, everybody in the casino would stop when we would be walking through. I'm not surprised. (laughs) Because, of course, we would walk through, like, en masse, right? Yeah, yeah. it'd be a a procession. Yeah, it was huge. So um, it was fun. It was exciting. But even then, it just didn't occur to me that I'm I'm famous and these people are looking at me because they know me. Mm -hmm. You know? It's a bit of a a knock on the head. You're like... Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, so was it something that when you started, like you just, again, you just thought it was just something you were going to do for a little bit and then you'd move on to something else? Yeah, I guess. I mean, I did. I was really just flying by the seat of my pants and um, having fun. Okay. You know, like I said, I had a daughter mm-hmm. and um, it was the first time I had a job that I could not need help. I, I was fully independent, mm-hmm. you know, and I could take care of her. So that was fantastic. It just never occurred to me that I was creating a career. Yeah. You know? And I think had I had I thought that back then, I definitely would have done some things differently. Sure. You know? For the longevity of it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're here 25 years later, so lo- you're, you're, lo- the longevity is still is you're pretty good with. <laughs> but, it's yeah. funny, too. Back then, people used to say men can be in it their entire lives, but women have a lifespan. And I I very much disagree with that. Oh, no. It, well, I mean, especially now. I mean, you – because and I've, and I've <clears> talked <throat> about this with multiple guests because I've had multiple, you know, MILF category performers – but just because you start because you started in ninety nine when American Pie came out and I and I I keep I feel bad that I keep mentioning you know the Stifler mom thing, <laughs> but but again it really did kind of open this this at you know this kind of floodgate yep. of of the you know wi- you know women of a more mature age being and I mean that's not when you started but how eventually 
there is longevity. Yeah. In oh, it. a thousand percent. Like you, you start as a thousand percent. What people fail to realize is yes, men get tired of seeing the same girl. But people also get attached. No, they do. Well, it's like any 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 actor, any performer that you love. I mean, yep. people still love to go see Tom Cruise or Brad Thousand Pitt and percent. stuff, Thousand even if they're in their sixties now. Mm-hmm. Yep. And and I'm sure with you, I mean, because uh, you know you've just I think probably just gotten more popular as a, a, you know in terms of well again because you, I feel like there's a certain because again they. People like with actors and stuff like that, I think, form certain uh, maybe just, again, as you said, attachments. I think trends have changed, too. So, you know, when I was growing up, um, Pamela Anderson was the the body shape Mm -hmm. that was in. And all the the big famous models, uh, not porn models, but, you know, models of our time. Like Cindy Crawford and Linda Evangelista. Yeah, they were skinny, had no butt, you know, that was just, and and I suppose in fashion that's still the way because they want the clothes to hang. They're mannequins. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) They're they're walking mannequins. A hanger. Yeah. A hanger for the clothes. Yeah. Um, But at least in our neck of the woods, things have changed so that my body style came very, became very popular, Mm -hmm. you know? So I'm very fortunate in that way, and I think to that point, uh, my popularity grew simply because the trends changed. Well, and that's and, you know, just the right time <laughs> thing because again, yeah. as as you because as it seems like as you started probably grad when did you start graduating to like or did you kind of always start in like those kind of milf type roles or did you start and then it just like over time that started to happen. I think they always because I was 28 when I started, mm-hmm. so I think they always kind of put me into milfy a, a more yeah stuff, well I you guess know? it also comes down maybe to, to your look yeah. like if if you have a very you know mature kind of look because i was still like i didn't i wasn't all tattooed up i did have a hip tattoo mm-hmm. um and i think i looked young enough that i could blend into other things so when when you have a solid performer who shows up mm-hmm. <laughs> and shows yeah. up on time yeah. and doesn't flake on you. Um, I got a lot of roles. I mean, there were times back in the day that I was working three or four scenes a day. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> it's nuts. That's that's a marathon. Anal. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Multiple anal or just just one? Um, like no, that? just one. I've okay. never done two uh two in the booty, but oh. um oh, well, I mean in like scenes, like multiple yeah. anal scenes in a day. Multiple anal scenes there in a go. day. There you go. I guess yeah. if you prep, you know, you got to use it when you if got If you're it. clean and you yeah. haven't eaten. Yeah, hey. right? <laughs> Make hay while the sun shines. Your mindset during the scene is, man, I really got to hit in and out when this is all done because I'm starving. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Well, it's like it's like bodybuilders because they cut and they and they prep before they perform or before they do stuff. And it wouldn't be that I set out to do that many scenes in the day. It would be, you know, this director said, "Hey, oh my God, this girl didn't show up." And you know mm-hmm. we can shift some scenes around. Can you get here? And I'm like, well, I'm on a I'm on a set right now, but I'll be there and you know as soon as I'm done. Oh, yeah. okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, you know. Well, and how important is work ethic? Like, is it something that you you know? Oh is, my god. Is such, I mean, no matter what, because people think. Oh my god. You know. So, uh, the story that I'm going to tell you is of somebody who got into the industry, and started making a lot of money, but was very young, mm. and started partying and doing stuff and you know when you party after a set you know that partying whether it's coke or drinking or whatever it is you're doing yeah um it might run into the night and well into the night and maybe the next morning Mm -hmm. you finally get to sleep and it's 4 a.m and you got a nine o'clock call time or an eight o'clock call time you're probably not making it no you and, know, and if you do, you're probably your your mind you're is wasted. probably not even you're not even in the right mindset <laughs> you're to wait, do it. You're like, ah, yeah, right. You know? Like, and I don't know if there's enough makeup to cover that. <laughs> no, it, it, makeup doesn't cover attitude. <laughs> that's yeah. There you, <laughs> you know, go. That's, there's that's, no that's great. Yeah. there's no cover for attitude. So, um, this person was late to a browser set, and I mean like three hours late. Okay, and browsers. At least back then, browsers was, had that kind of policy. Well, we'll shoot you, but we'll dock your pay. And then the next time, there won't be a next time. Yeah. We won't shoot you again. Mm. Um, 
So that kind of briefly tanked a career. Mm. Now, the beauty of the porn industry is it's very forgiving. Yeah, I They're can see They're very that. forgiving people. You can earn your way. You know, you can do foot fetish stuff. You can do smaller shoots. And then when you prove that you have your head on straight and you've got mm. some ethics back, you yeah, know, yeah. Um, they'll start shooting you again. Oh, that's cool. But um, it kind of tanked a career. And I think it tanked a career. It was meant to tank. If really? That, yeah. Um, I think that person was better off in a different industry. Okay. And that makes sense because not everybody's suited for, no. for, ev- for anything. No, for everything. not at all. There's some amazing things about being in the industry and there, it, like it can be rough too. Well, yeah. And, th- but that's for any industry, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there might be some people out there that are realtors and they love their job and they make great money because there's passion and they just, yeah. they love it. Yeah. And other people are like, oh, yeah, I don't know. I have to show houses to people. No, not so much, you know? Yeah. It's, it, yeah. So to each his own. Yeah. But, uh, but that person is doing much better in oh, what great. they're doing now. That's great. <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Well, and so was it something that w- w- at what point did you start to realize like, hey, I'm going to I'm going to stick with this or this is actually Whew. turning um, into to something that's going to be long term? Well, I did take a big break. OK, I took a big break. In fact, I didn't mean to, when I moved to Vegas, I bought a house and I was married at the time, thought I was going to have more kids. And we were living off of my income. OK. And we were married five years, and five years of me doing everything is not – I'm very traditional. So I like to – I love to work, mm-hmm. and I love to be successful. However, um, I firmly believe that a man's role in the family mm-hmm. is the provider – yeah, yeah. And the, the head of the money. household. Yeah. The head of the household. Okay. Um, I don't mind bringing in income. Okay. Okay. And I don't mind bringing in more income. It's not about how much. Yeah. But it's very much so a mindset that, um, you know, we don't have multiple presidents. Yeah. True. There's got to be a head. Yeah. I I feel. Yeah, 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 it's yeah. It's a yeah, company. yeah. yeah. A marriage is a company. Yeah, you need a CEO. Even there though there's has a, there's, to be a head. There, there's a board. Yep, but, exactly. But the CEO is the ultimate exactly. decision Oops. maker of the company. And that's my point. And if you're not making an income and you're not contributing, guess what? Yeah. Um, You know, back then I thought uh, love was everything. Mm-hmm. And really respect is everything. So okay. if you don't have respect for somebody that love that you have for them will vanish oh, it's, like it's, a dandelion. It's huge. You know, like gone. Yeah. And um, that's what happened. And, yeah, that's, and that, that that's totally understandable. You can't, yeah. respect is something, like as I've gotten older, uh, like I, when people, people will, will ask like, you know, what do you want in a, in a partner? What do you want in a, in, you know, if you were going to get married and all this stuff and, Big that, boobs. Big boobs is, is, <laughs> is number one. It is number one. <laughs> but on top of that, but beside that. But you have no. to respect them. Yeah. But the, yeah. like, I don't want to feel like I don't matter. Yes. To the other person. Yes. Like how, if I'm, if I'm, I want to feel like they, and cause, and that would be reciprocal. It's not like I wouldn't make them feel that way too. Right. But the idea of, you know, because I've unfortunately I've been in enough dating situations to know that this person doesn't care about me. This person is just using me for whatever reason. Yep. That this person doesn't respect me, and that they only and and I, at like at the end of the day, that that's something where I'm just I'm not going to tolerate that because I was in a relationship like that for a while that yep. I I put up with it because at the time I was like I don't want to be alone. I'd yep. rather I, I'll be with somebody who mistreats me, which unfortunately too many people. Yeah, no. think of and but when I got to that point where I was but after that relationship ended I was like I'm not doing that again yeah and it you know and I, I actually said this recently on, on Twitter which was you know loneliness is painful but you know being mistreated in a relationship I think is more painful a thousand and percent. more damaging mm-hmm. a thousand percent and you know I would rather 
be single than be in a than be mistreated in a in relationship. the wrong situation. Yeah, yeah, and a thousand percent. I was watching yeah. that guy that does the interviews that mm-hmm. I told you about yeah, earlier yeah, that yeah. we were talking about. Yeah, and he did an interview with a guy who who like had a marriage counseling thing or or wrote some books about marriage and relationships. And he said, and I agree with, um, the most important decision you can make is who you marry. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it affects literally every aspect of your life. It'll affect your work. It'll affect everything, Mm -hmm. you know? So I was with somebody that didn't really want me in the industry, but had no problem with me towing the line. So then there's this weird dichotomy of, okay, you like the money, but you don't want me to do what I do. (laughs) That's a somewhat of a contradiction. (laughs) Hmm. And then. I'm wondering what his ideal situation was then. Like he didn't want you doing it, but he wanted the money. It's like, honestly, I think he was very young, mm-hmm. and I think, I think it took me leaving him for him to realize that he was not behaving as the person he was claiming he wanted to be. Okay, you know, you want to be a husband, mm-hmm. then you have to buck up, little camper. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah, and at least contribute. Yeah, you know, so. He's a great human being now. Mm-hmm. He's married, has a kid. Okay. Everything's good, honky dory with him. But I think it took me leaving for him to say, I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing as a human being and as a husband. And sometimes that's what it takes. Yeah. No, you a thousand know, percent. A wake up call yep. of that nature. Yep. So, so I took 10 years off. Uh, I, I didn't mean to take 10 years off. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just happened that yeah. way. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I'm Aquarian and I have a lot of interest. I love, like I get into something and I'm like, Ooh, <laughs> and then I forget about everything else. And I'm like, Ooh, you're, you're, you get, fo- yeah, you get hyper-focused, <laughs> hyper-focused. And so I bought this house. I renovated this house. I, I, yes, I can rip out walls. I can frame, I can hang drywall. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I was doing all sorts of stuff to my house and interior design and all of this, you Mm -hmm. know. And then I'm like, damn, it's been like 10 years since I've been in the industry, (laughs) since I've shot. Yeah. You know? So um, I made it come back. Happy belated birthday, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. you, Because I saw that, I guess it was a few days ago. Yeah. I got to try to. Make sure these don't come out. They have <laughs> will of their own. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I made a huge comeback. It was fantastic. Uh, I I absolutely love the industry, mm-hmm. but um, I definitely notice it has changed. Okay. Um, In what way or ways? Um, the professional side of the professional side for other companies, mm-hmm. um, it has changed because it used to be this grand, grander event. You had, well, I, I take that back. You had two different things. You had the big grand shoots and then you had Gonzo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Gonzo yeah. was like, hey, come over for an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know? Yeah, like Bang Bros and exactly. stuff Exactly. Like yeah. um, and then you had sets like uh, Wicked and Vivid and VCA and these big grandiose, you might be there eight hours, we're doing every shot, we're doing, you know. Mm-hmm. And they had a cook, they had craft services, Okay, you know, it was a big event, a yeah. big, big production. Um, they don't do that so much anymore. Yeah. Um, you might work for a Brazzers director who says, hey, we're ordering lunch. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And you'll be there the same amount of time, but I feel like it's not. Like back in the day, there was was a whole crew that was lighting. It was like feature. It was feature films. Yeah, it was big time feature films. Yeah. And now it's like you got one assistant who has the fill light. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who's under your crotch. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, and people um, shoot stuff on their phones, and yeah, it's like there's it's all different ways it, to do technology it. Technology has come very far, and it's reduced the amount of people that you have to have on set, and therefore you can do, you know, your budgets can be much smaller. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's fantastic. Um, I don't know. I, somewhere through that, I feel like it kind of lost some familiarity and some... Maybe some glamour. 
yeah. to it. Like when yeah. I was talking to, because when I had a Christy Canyon on the show, because she started in the 80s and back then and how it was just very in and how back then it was just all features because that's all you could do. You mm-hmm. didn't, there was, you didn't do, because she was talking about how uh, when she talked to a, a newer performer, a younger performer, and she's like, oh, how many films have you done? And she was like, well, I've. I haven't done any, but I've done 2000 scenes and you're just like, cause it's, it's now just scenes. Yeah. It's not, it's not films. Yep. So, and that's actually, and that was something that, because that perspective, cause when you started, I assume that that, you know, was still, was VHS still the main or was DVD kind of taking over at that no, point? No, when I started, it was VHS. Okay. Yep. So even though the internet had kind of crazy, yeah, right. In a small, a very small amount of time, we have like leaps and bounds changed technology. It's yeah. It, nuts. It, it's incredible. Yeah. I mean, and, and in a way, how it's become this, like, it, you know, things like OnlyFans and, and these places are, it's been good for a lot of ways because, for instance, you can make your own content yourself. Yep. And it can be 100% your, you know, you have creative control. You do it. Yep. You work with who you want to work with. You make the, exactly the kind of content you want to make, whether that's, you know, maybe harder or softer or more yeah. whatever. Like, yeah. you do whatever you, you want to do. You find a niche and that's your, that's your thing. thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that's also created this, this oversaturation of people that, um, cream still rises to the top. Exactly. Baby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The people and the people that are the best at it, obviously still yeah. shine, but it's just now, now there's a lot more to, you know, to try to wade through. Yep. But then luckily because you've had, because, you know, you've been in the industry longer and so people know you, you know, there's, you come in with an established audience already Yeah. as opposed to like, if you were just starting now from scratch. I don't know if it'd be a lot harder. I I feel like if you're starting now, you really have, first off, I don't know how men start. That's just poor things. <laughs> <laughs> it takes it takes a lot of money, I feel like, to um, establish yourself as a, a male performer. Um, well, and also the ability. Well, of course. That, no, that, that's, that's, that's something that ultimately is the... Yeah, definitely. If you can't do it, you can't do it. There's yeah. no pill or injection that's going to make you do it. You ha- there has to be something there. Yeah. Period. Mm. But uh, but apart from that, I kn- I know there's loads of guys who have the ability mm-hmm. and just don't have the in. They're like, oh. I I have an OnlyFans channel, but it's just not making me money. And I'm like, yeah, because you don't have a girl. Yeah, that's and that unfortunately that's the <laughs> that's, that's the, the end. Unfortunately, <laughs> yeah. Is. So either you have money to hire the girls that have the following. Mm-hmm. And they're willing to be hired by you. Mm-hmm. That's another thing. There's a lot of girls. Take note. This is important. <laughs> so many guys ask this. I know that a no. lot of guys ask women all the time. How, how do, do I, I get, get started? started? Mm-hmm. So this this is important. Yeah. So you have to have the girls, and you have to hire the girls that have the following. And it's and it's now driven not just by their OnlyFans or their website. It's their social media. Yeah. That's what, and that's what bothers me the most about, uh, like, just briefly to touch on this, I, I won't stay on it long, but Instagram just closed my account. I, I saw that. I'm sorry. And I'm beyond pissed because I don't do any, I'm like, all I do is like and, and talk. I, yeah. I don't, I mean, I thought that was the algorithm that you were supposed to do. Go on other people and like, and, yeah. you know, chat and whatever, and. Yeah, you have to post, and I'm really horrible at that because there's a lot of days that I I just get lost in my house doing this or that or the other. Yeah, life. Um, yeah, like real life. Yeah, and so I forget to put makeup on and take pictures mm-hmm. or take video. I'm not very good at that interaction of social media. There's some people that stay on their phones constantly and they're constantly doing stuff and TikToks and this and that, and I find it difficult to do that because. Well, you didn't grow up with that. I didn't grow up with that, but I also tend to be more reclusive, Mm -hmm. one. And B, I also get very enveloped in what I'm doing. Yeah. So I'm having a conversation with you. My phones are over there. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I don't give a fuck about them right now. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, no, no. no. You're focused on this one. I'm focused on you. I appreciate that. And, I, you know, that might be like we go out to dinner and I'm focused on, oh, damn, I forgot to take a picture. (laughs) You know what I mean? That's what happens. Yeah. Well, we got to make sure after this, though, because <laughs> we, we talked sure. about that. Because it's, yeah. it's for, for promotion. But you see what yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. So, yeah. so social media, find a girl that has a social media following, mm-hmm. big social media following, and that's willing to shoot with new talent. 
and not willing to give, like, personally, I don't shoot with new talent that has nothing to offer me. Well, and that makes sense. Unless they're paying me. Yes. If they're paying me for my scene, a whole different thing. Yeah. But if they want to shoot a content trade, uh. Well, and that's the thing. Not really into it. And why? Because I'll have a videographer there, and that means that I'm paying him. We might have a location Mm -hmm. uh, that I possibly am paying for. Maybe we split it, but. The testing. I, I don't even know if you can perform. Exactly. You're, you're, putting, there's, you're putting all this money out there for, right. uh, you know. Which for, is exactly what the the companies are going to say and do. Yeah. That's when it becomes difficult, you know. So if you can hire a few girls and they're willing to shoot with you mm-hmm. and you can do a couple of scenes, then you have a couple of scenes you can show companies and you can say, hey, look, I'm, I'm doing it already, you yeah. know. That's your in with companies. As far as your your float the boat with with your only fans or your own website, that's marketing. Yeah. Well, and that also can be money because <clears throat> if you have to be able to to get it promotion, it has to be money because yeah. you have to hire the right girls and you have to also probably, you know, give them a teaser or some kind of pictures or something that they can post on their social media. Yeah. That's how you build a, an audience with your social media, mm-hmm. and that's how you drive traffic to your to your platforms. Yeah, that's how you make money. That's how you get in the industry. <laughs> well, but it takes money to make money, right? That's, well, that's what the, they say. That's the thing. Even if I mean, you have to be able to invest in what you believe in, because yep. if if you believe <clears throat> if you believe in it, I feel like you're going to put money into it when you when yes. you can. But if you don't, and you're just looking at this as a kind of a flight of fancy like oh i just or i it's like hey i'm attracted to her and i want to have sex with her yep. i'm going to try to cloak this in a let's do content together yeah. where it's just me getting to hook up with you and then or worse and, and i'm not saying it's not for the broke you know it's a it was a fantastic career and you can make a lot of money but again if you're coming from nothing and you have nothing to invest it's a very difficult get mm. if you have a girl that you could shoot with that, you know, is your girlfriend or whatever. And she knows how to market herself or Mm -hmm. she knows how to do social media or you know how to do her social media. Yeah. That could be a different thing. I I know of a lot of male performers that came in with a girlfriend. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. You know? Yeah. Or it's interesting because I think there are certain discovery stories. Like there's one, if, I don't know if I'll ever get her on the show, but I'd love to, you know, another person I'd love to have is uh, Sophie D and mm, she's a um, doll. Yeah. And, and I, and I think, I don't know if this, if this is true or not, but I've heard that she discovered Johnny Sins. Oh, I don't know. Well, that's the thing. So I, I, I'd be curious to ask about yeah. that and to say like, uh, I mean, granted if I could have, cause eventually if I could have, you know, you know, I'll, I'll try to have more people on the show at once, uh, like maybe two guests at the same oh, time. That'd be fun. As opposed to just, you know, we can, as opposed to just one-on-one, although I'm just focusing on the one-on-one right now. Um, but yeah, like to, to get that perspective of, for especially pre like OnlyFans stuff, like how yeah. do you, how did you get discovered in that situation? Because um, I think that whereas women, uh, you know, I, I don't know if it's an easier means of entry because if you just if you look good and you and well you're... you have to remember that the vast majority of consumers of porn are men yeah and they're and they're for the women yeah so it's so the men just need to be functional <laughs> essentially that that's that's their job yeah uh, it takes great i mean there are a lot of great male performers that really know how to utilize variety mm-hmm. in their platform and yet stick to a niche. Yeah. You know? Um, and they do amazing uh, pulling in male viewers, mm-hmm. right? Um, just because they have so many different people, on, you know, that they perform with. Yeah. Yeah. It's fantastic. So, so but it'd be, it'd be fascinating mm-hmm. because, again, it's a, like, what, what actually got you started? Like, was it somebody who you met? Was it like you were doing <sighs> something else? And it just kind of, you know. So I was living in San Diego. And for me, I was dancing before. And then I had my daughter. And I was trying to dance after I had her. And the economy just wasn't that good. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to also say, uh, how do I tiptoe into this? I am not a very good salesperson on the the dance floor. Okay. So 
So like trying to get like VIP I'm dances. I'm just more, and stuff. yeah, exactly. You just like to just hang out and talk. Um, no, I love to dance and right. I love to do, you know, one-on-one dances. Mm-hmm. I just, I'm very, fairly insecure, I guess. Okay. <laughs> that's, a, you know. that's a bad admission, but yeah. Yeah, well, I'm. So I don't like to walk up and cold call is basically what you're doing. Yeah. Hey, do you want to dance? Yeah. And then they say no. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know, like I just I lose failed. it. failed. Fuck. Like another no, you know, and then I walk away and I'm like, okay, like that's it. I'm done. Right. (laughs) Then I need cigarettes, (laughs) you know, (laughs) it's this stressful thing. Yeah. Whereas porn and the touring, um, you know, they like you already. Yeah. It's a, it comes from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. They, they contacted you. They like you already. They are after you. Yeah. Great. Done. Yeah. The, you, <laughs> like, the work, half the work's already done. I am. Is my nipple showing? I, I, th- I think you're okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> um, don't want to get a little crazy on this. Yeah, show, right. You know? Well, <laughs> have a little blur section on the, <laughs> during the interview as it keeps popping. Um. Hopefully YouTube doesn't uh, ding it too oh, hard. Yeah. It's all right. Um, do, can you swear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Swearing's okay. fine. It's it's. The- Whew, some of those interviews go like on different platforms, and they're like, you can't say that. YouTube, I, I just YouTube. Really, it's a porn interview. Yeah, like, yeah, right? what are you, what are you thinking? <laughs> well, and yeah, I th- I think you, t- I think uh, yeah, swearing swearing's fine. Um, as long, I mean, if it doesn't get like super super excessive, but even then, because I've seen interviews, uh, like I've seen interviews where there was uh, there's um. I don't know if you've ever seen like Gordon Ramsay on certain shows. That guy swears like a sailor. I'm like, I'm wondering how he does does regular television without (laughs) dropping F bombs left and right all the time. Yep. But, yep. Um, but yeah, but you know, it's, it's so, it's just funny to me. But, uh, yeah, I think it's the only thing would be F the, if the nudity, but you're, I think you're fine. So, but actually, cause you, you, so you brought up the, the touring thing I wanted to bring up. So you actually announced recently that you're going on a final Uh tour. Is this like a kiss final tour where it's <laughs> like Cher, final? Her, but, her, like Cher, her, yeah. f- her final tour was, I don't know, 10 years, yeah. 15 years. Um, this is the final final. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I, I love doing what I do. Mm-hmm. And that has to probably be my favorite side of it because I love meeting new people. Mm-hmm. I love meeting a variety of people. Yeah. I like seeing people, um, you know, maybe I see them two or three times a year and spend some quality time with people. Mm-hmm. And I love that. I do. <clears throat> but I'm, I feel like I'm entering another phase, mm-hmm. which by the way, you should have me back probably in mm, September, October. Okay. I won't say anything more, but but have me back. Okay. We'll do another interview. Okay. Um, because I got a lot coming up. Are you so are you a looking to, up. to like are you like gonna leave the industry or you're just no, not gonna no, tour anymore? I'm not I'm just not gonna tour anymore. Okay. A lot uh, of people are sigh of relief. Yeah. She's not going. <laughs> yeah, I'm not leaving the industry. Okay. I definitely have a lot I'm doing. Uh new OnlyFans platform like a new yeah. not platform, but a new uh Something different. Okay. Completely different. Um, And then I have a whole line of movies I want to do of my own productions, not necessarily with me in them, but Mm -hmm. me directing or me, you know, storyboarding them. Yeah, yeah, behind. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Behind the scenes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Um, And then I have some new changes in my familial thing. So Okay. (laughs) I I will just say that and leave it at that because I don't want to jinx anything. No, 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 no. no. Um, but yeah, there's a lot going on. And I feel like touring, I tend to be the type of person who just goes, like I've said before, I go in big waves. And mm. when I go in that wave, it's a big wave. Yeah. So when I tour, I'm gone the whole year. I might come back a couple of weeks. Here or there. And that, you know, and it's like a week here, oop, four days here, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I've done a lot to my house now. And I feel good in my house. It feels really uh, like a blessing to be home. Yeah, it's a you home. Know? Yeah. Because a house is just a building. Exactly. You know. Exactly. 
Um, which brings another whole thing. I would love to do interior design, and I, I signed up and paid for the school. And then I got caught up in touring and traveling, and I was dating somebody, and that became a big deal, and I just didn't devote the time and attention to the school and this and that, and okay, so now I have to re-up for the school. Yeah. And it is something I really want to do, you know? Okay. Um, I also bought 196 acres in Tennessee. Oh. I um, I want to build a ranch. Okay. I want to have little... Little animals and, you know, I I don't really like the direction that I see the world going, at least the world in our neck of the woods. Yeah. Meaning the U.S. is not, I mean, if you just watched Instagram and the news, you'd probably be terrified to leave your house. Yeah, they, they, it's a lot, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of stuff out there that seems. And I travel, so I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, it's not like they're portraying it. No. You know, I mean, I go to New York and I'm unaccosted. Mm -hmm. You don't see gangs and guns and, yeah. you know, craziness. Now, are there places? Yeah, I'm sure because they're not making, I don't believe they're making news stories up where people are dying or people are getting injured. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I have noted for a long time that the United States allows their food to be altered, allows things. Did you hear about the Cheerios thing? No. What there's something here? that just broke that said that I guess there's a, there's a pesticide. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, but, no, no. That, but, but this is exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's why it's, it's so I guess the story broke that they found in Cheerios and some other oat based foods that there's a pesticide in them that causes infertility. And okay, so that's that is more to the topic of what I'm talking about. Mm. I feel like I maybe it's worldwide. I don't know. I don't live in another country. Yeah, I live in this country and yeah. I can just speak on this country. This country is attacking people. Mm -hmm. You know, the powers that be don't like us. We are the cockroaches of the world mm -hmm. and they are trying to reduce population. How do you do that? Well, you attack fertility and you kill people off. How do you do that? The air they breathe, the water they drink, the food they eat. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. It's pretty basic. So if you're not growing your own food, raising your own animals, you can't believe anything they tell you. Mm -hmm. The food pyramid is BS. Yeah, wasn't it? it was, I think it was created by the guy who initially <laughs> invented the K ration in World War II. I forgot what his name Probably. was. But yeah, he <clears throat> create he so he but and they created the pyramid as a means of just trying to I think promote. Obviously, I'm sure people are gonna you know clarify and, and, <laughs> and, and, and in the comments yeah. and stuff like that. But <clears throat> essentially, I heard that the basically it was it was yeah it, it was it wasn't based on any real kind of nutrition science. It was just based on no. It's actually <laughs> exactly inverse. Yeah. It's exactly opposite of what it should be. Because carbs and grains and bread is considered, you have should to eat the most of that. Yeah. Yeah, right? Exactly. It's sad because I love them, though. Yeah. I love bread. Well, it's addictive. I know. It's. Uh, but it's, what you don't know is not only do they do GMOs mm -hmm. that they have to label for, right? Mm -hmm. But there's this whole thing called hybridization. Mm -hmm. So people don't know this. You might be reactive to wheat products, bread products, Anything that has grain in it, and you're not reactive to gluten. Yeah. So you're like, what's going on? Well, they hybridize wheat. Like, let's say there's a hundred different species of wheat, and they all have different good qualities and bad qualities, but they're mm. just looking at the good qualities and they say that one is resistant to you know drought, and this one is resistant to this, and this one doesn't the bugs don't like and this and this and this right mm -hmm. so they pluck out all this dna from each and every one of them and they create a new strand oh interesting and in that creation they don't you you are only testing for gluten but there are other proteins that you could be reacting to that mm -hmm. you have no idea to test for yeah <laughs> So now you've got a, a populace that's reacting to stuff. Well, no wonder we have all these gut dysbiosis things, you know, mm -hmm. like uh, people are, I mean, we have more sickness now and weird shit. Yeah. 
we have so much. I watched this TED talk from this girl that I think she said could be wrong. And I don't remember what she had, but she had something that not another human being on the face of the earth had. Mm -hmm. We have that kind of stuff happening all the time. Yeah. We have ADHD and autism spectrum stuff that, you know, what happens to your gut happens to your brain barrier. Mm -hmm. And the same, you know, uh, I feel like I'm popping out. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Um, and the same, you know, uh, disconnection or the same tearing that happens in the gut is happening in the brain barrier. That's not what you want to happen. No. <laughs> At all. No. And it's no wonder that we have people going crazy and mass shooting and thinking, I mean, I'm all about having sex with whoever you want, whatever yeah. you want to do. Yeah. But you think you're a dog? Hmm. What? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, yeah. The, and God bless them. I don't care how you feel. Feel however you want. Be whatever you want, but you can't change DNA. Yeah. Okay. That's all I'll say on that topic. Yeah. It's, I, a, I it's a very hot topic. I, I, yeah. And but I, I feel I, I, like it doesn't happen as much in other countries. Why doesn't it happen in other countries? I read an article one time, just a little excerpt, and I'm like, that's weird. They recalled, I don't remember what alcohol it was, but it was some alcohol they recalled from the, from the EU, mm -hmm. European Union, because it was the American version. And I was like, wait, what? Yeah. American version? Of alcohol? Yeah, right, yeah. Like, what? And they allow dyes and certain additives, which I said, alcohol has, ad like, yeah. what? What are you putting doesn't, in alcohol? Doesn't alcohol kill anything? Right. <laughs> like, don't use it to disinfect? And why would you need a dye? What color is it? Is yeah. it black? That might be kind of avant-garde. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> like, what color is alcohol that you had to add some dye? Yeah. And why would you do that? Mm -hmm. Like Kraft Mac and cheese, you know, in the in Europe, they they make it orange with turmeric. Okay, and which here is it's yellow, like yellow dye number five, I think. Some Something. big bad, you know, number dye, yeah. blah, blah blah blah. And I'm like, why? If you mm -hmm. already have the technology to make it the healthy version, I'll pay the extra ten cents. Yeah, for the for yeah for that version. It's way it's crazy, yeah. Because I've seen I've seen I've seen comparisons of like ingredients for it's the nuts. exact same product it's here versus say in England, and yeah. it's like the you know the one in in you know the European version. It's just like maybe five ingredients, and you're like, oh, I recognize all that. And in the U.S., yep. it's like thirty, and you're like, yep. what is exactly? In this? And also, you know, uh, I I was watching something about how the Italian make pasta, mm -hmm. and they. They cold dry it, low temperature dry it, mm -hmm. which does something to the proteins so that it's not as reactive as the quickie stuff. Okay. They heat the quickie stuff, they heat to a high temperature and dry it really fast. Mm -hmm. And it does something to the protein that makes it different and we react to it. Yeah. So that's why you should get like Italian, you know, like yeah. da, 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 right? Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's interesting. That's really interesting. In this day and age where we can mass produce anything and we have the technology to dry anything, do anything, we have space too. Yeah. Because now they have come so far that they can, it's not just one bed of drying, it's layers of drying. Mm -hmm. So there's no excuse for this except for you just don't give a fuck. Yeah, which yeah, or there's an agenda for you to do. Yeah, and it, it seems like this is a major rabbit hole that you can re get really go down. <laughs> we could to waste if you a lot to. of time talking so, about that rabbit hole. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so, but if if you don't mind, if we can, you know, switch. No, gears. let's Sean say back into yeah, boobs. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, there you go. You read. You read my mind. Um. So you were so yeah, getting into the boobs now because yours are extraordinary. Thank you. Um. You said that you had a boob adventure, or you described oh, it as God, your boob yes. adventure. So please, please take us take through us on this the middle journey. Earth of boobdom. <laughs> you know. So um, I started off with C's. Mm -hmm. uh, excuse me. My original boobs were like an A minus. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> you probably have bigger boobs than I had. Oh. Uh, well. I seriously had very small boobs. Okay. And so I started, I had to start off slow, right? Yeah, yeah. And it was not an intention of mine to go this big mm-hmm. ever. I just eventually evolved. Yeah. You know? Um. So the boob adventure, when I first started, I did silicone. Okay. Love the look and feel of silicone. Nobody could tell I had fake boobs. Mm. They were beautiful. Beautiful job. And I gradually got bigger and bigger and bigger because, you know, my body probably was getting bigger too. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I like big boobs. I yeah. do. I, I I really like boobs on women. Uh, big boobs. Don't get me wrong. I play with the little ones too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I appreciate all boobs. Yeah. But I like big but boobs. Hu- yeah. yeah. Huge, there's something about huge yes. boobs that are... It's just like, ding! <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I understand completely. <laughs> yes. Um, so I gradually got bigger and bigger. And I ended up, you know, shooting in the industry, as you know. And I don't know if it was maybe somebody like I've done some Dom stuff where they've wrapped uh, rope around them and got them real tight. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But somehow this one, my right side, ruptured. Oh, okay. So I had gel all over. Mm. Yeah. So I went in to get a size change, and the doctor, when I came out, he was like, good God, it was all the way, like, leaching in the back. You know, we had to dig out gel from back there. Wow. And I'm like, holy shit, good thing I came in, you know, (laughs) for a boob change. Yeah. Um, What I didn't know is, you know what a capsule is, right? I think so, but if you So want. you have your implant and you create the pocket. Mm-hmm. When you create a pocket and you implant something fake, something not the body, Yeah, the body says, what is this? What it, mm. And it builds kind of along the lines of an oyster, okay. building, building a pearl, right? Interesting. Okay. It says, I don't like this, so I'm going to coat it. Mm. And I'm going to coat it with scar tissue. Okay. In a regular person... That that coating is called the capsule, mm-hmm. and the capsule is thin and even all the way, so it should look a lot like a sheet covering mm-hmm. the implant. <clears throat> Other people might might have problems, and then they have encapsulation, which is or uh, capsule contracture, mm-hmm. when the capsule starts to tighten and it tightens around the implant, and then it looks funny. Yeah, so they have to have the cap the capsule cut. Yeah. So nobody told me that my capsule absorbed the silicone. Okay. So when they when they cut me, they cut at the nipple and they tuck in. Sorry. <laughs> It'll be constant. Yeah. Um, so they cut at the nipple, they pop the old implant out and they tuck the new one in. You would think that they would see the capsule in there and gosh, that one looks like nan bread as opposed to a thin, even sheet. Yeah. And they had to look different. Mm -hmm. You would have thought that someone somewhere down the line would have said, that one's weird. Yeah. That one's, (laughs) there's something not right there. So I started having all these symptoms from silicone poisoning. Yeah. Yeah. And had no clue. Right. And I, I, I kept living life, whatever, and then I decided I wanted to go big. I thought I wanted to go big, but I wasn't sure how big. Mm. So I got the um, expanders. Okay. So if you don't know what expanders are, expanders, they were created for people with mastectomies. Okay. And they stretch the skin. So they put a, a regular implant in that has a, a, a feed yeah. That goes to a port. And yeah. the port, my ports were right here. That's why I have like little scars right here. Oh, okay. Um, so my ports were right there. And then you take a syringe, you clean off your port, mm-hmm. and you inject into the port, and you can fill your boobs up. Yes. And the point of that is you go slow, mm-hmm. and then you gradually get bigger, and your skin has time to react. Yeah. And then you can, the beauty of it, you can go big, and then you can say, oh, wait a minute, this is a little too big. And then you can take out, too. Yeah. So that's the beauty of of, of expanders. 
Yeah, I've had I've had some people on the show that that had expanders. Had expanders. Yeah, mm-hmm. there was one guest I had that she had she had four thousand cc's Ooh. each side, and <laughs> she, she was talking about I think how you know in the beginning she started expanding like by I, I don't know by a lot, and then as they but as that happened, she started kind of reducing how much she and now she's only doing it like maybe a hundred cc's or ninety cc's. So at she's time. still filling. <laughs> I know it's yeah. Look up if, if you look up the episode. She's yeah. They're pretty. They're pretty. Incredible. Like Minka and uh, uh, what is her name? Chrissy, Christy, Chrissy. Anyway, there's a lot of them. I had um, back in the day when I first started my career, I had a best friend who was a photographer, videographer. Mm. So he, I had a house with a with a little house in the backyard, mm. and he lived in the backyard in the little house in the backyard, and we filmed all the time. And he was a massive boob lover. Uh huh. Okay, and I mean. He loved the, the ones that are like this big. Yeah, <laughs> you know, like uh, I was Maxi Mounds was one. Exactly, who she so. he loved that. So he was a little bit um, in my head as far <laughs> as far as me going bigger. Yeah, um, because he absolutely loved them. He thought they were just the cat's meow. So they they are pretty wonderful. And I'll he told that. me he was the one who told me the doctors to go with and. Um, my options, Mm -hmm. you know, so I did this, I did this, um, expanders Mm -hmm. and I, unbeknownst to me, I caught something in the surgery. Okay. In the hospital. And, you know, that leads to a whole thing that I will only say you have to prove that they did something wrong to Mm -hmm. actually have anybody care. care. (laughs) Otherwise you're just on your own. Yeah. So here's what happened to me. That silicone was all in that capsule. They cut into me and implanted the new implants. Mm. And inside the capsule was the bacteria. Oh. It got trapped inside there. Okay. So I did tons of tests. I had, what happened is I had right here, I had this red rash. Mm -hmm. And it looked like maybe a fungal infection. Oh, okay. But nobody could tell what it was. Nobody could tell what it was. That's always nice. I had blood tests. I sold my Audi to afford all these treatments because nobody could tell me what I had. Mm -hmm. I was close to getting them removed. Mm -hmm. Just saying, I'm done with boobs. I'm, it's obviously I have, you know, because you can have silicone poisoning and not have silicone boobs. Oh, wow. Because the actual sac is silicone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So the ca- the casing. Right. Yeah. Exactly. The balloon. <laughs> so nobody knew what I had. I, I was I went to a doctor here in Vegas and I'm like, just take them. Mm-hmm. I'm done. I, I, I just want to be done with this. It was painful. Probably every two minutes I would get what felt like a little electrical shock. And I would just go like that. And it would oh, be really? like, oh my God. Wow. And I dealt with this for like maybe three or four months. Mm-hmm. And I got by, oddly enough. I get off my surgery medication really fast. Mm -hmm. So I had all this pain med lying around and my daughter was like, you better half that mom, you know, because you don't want to build a tolerance to it. So I would take half a pain pill in the morning and half a pain pill at night just Mm -hmm. to deal with this. Something. Right. And I finally said enough, just take them. And the doctor here was like, you have been everywhere and you've done all these treatments. Just, I, I need one solid file of everything you've done so he started contacting all these doctors right and he contacted the doctor who did the surgery Mm -hmm. and then that doctor was like what's going on (laughs) yeah and i'm like you remember how i sent you some pictures of some uh bacterial infection or something well it wasn't what you thought it was and i've been to the you know cdc i've been to you know all all these disease clinics and nobody could tell me Mm -hmm. what it was so I'm just having them removed. And he's like, get down here. He was in LA. So I said, okay. So a week later he had me in and I, and I looked at him in the face and I said, I don't care. I want all of it taken out and sent to a lab. Mm-hmm. That's on me. I'm paying for this. Right. Mm-hmm. I want the capsule taken too. He's like, no, I don't want to do that. They're, they'll be different. And I said, that's why I wanted you to do them both. Yeah. But you didn't want to do them both. Okay. Mm. But for some reason, God, my angel, the devil, I don't Whatever. know. Yeah. Somebody was telling me, take the capsule too. Mm-hmm. 
And that's how they found out the capsule was full of silicone. Mm -hmm. And they found I had this bacteria infection, bacterial infection called light Klebsiella oxytosa ingrained in my brain. I will never forget that name yeah. because I had to go on IV antibiotics. Wow. Which is a big deal. Mm-hmm. It's a big deal. Yeah. <laughs> to go on IV anti- antibiotics to kill this. Mm-hmm. And now having said all of that, I went down to uh, Do- Don Revis down in oh, Florida. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic doctor. I absolutely adore him. I he hope is, to have him on the show someday. Oh God. I, good luck. That's a, an amazing uh, yeah. person to have on the show. Um, he's super sweet. He answers all his own email, mm-hmm. which is mind boggling to me. He doesn't have an assistant or a and secretary that does it. And he's responsive. Like I, I might send a shoot an email in the morning and two hours, three hours later, maybe, uh, he's responded. Wow. Um, yeah, he's fantastic. I love him to death. And mm-hmm. any, any, anybody that I can send down there, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, in fact, the doctor, who did my um, expanders down in LA is, I believe, dead. Okay. He died. Um, so I don't know who else are the big boob doctors now. I'm sure there's some, but I know Revis is the one that I've yeah. heard the most of. And he's 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 in Miami or is he just in Florida? Uh, near to Fort Lauderdale. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. But because I've had other people when they've talked about their doctors, I think that I've, somebody said like one here is really good. I forgot what the name was, but... Um, but big boob doctors, I think that, so. That specialize in that, like I, th- I think so. I'm just, I'd have to, I'd have to. Be funny to I, create like a list. I gotta believe it's up and coming because more and more girls are going bigger. Yeah, like bigger, bigger. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm happy about that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's a, fa- <laughs> it's fantastic. I just hope that it's not that guinea big kind of thing that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. my era went through. Mm-hmm. You know, they've kind of refined a lot of the surgeries now, and mm-hmm. so it's not so much guinea pig anymore. So, so your size now, like, is it something like, what's your favorite thing about having, you know, huge boobs? My favorite thing. I don't have to wear a bra. I all, it, they always look great. Yeah. Um, I do most of the time wear a bra. Yeah. Um, because they're five pounds each. Okay. Um, I'm roughly 36 J, although certain companies don't go up to J. So, um, you know, agent provocateur. It's funny because a lot of companies have have moved with the times, mm-hmm. and they've started creating bigger sizes yeah, because yeah, there's yeah. more need. Uh, agent provocateur and um, Honey Burdette mm-hmm. are the two that I most commonly wear for pretty bras. Okay, and they actually have semi foundational ones that are pretty. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't. I don't wear them as a foundation bra. Just you know, when I'm cleaning my house, that's what yeah. I'm wearing. No, but if I go out and I want to look pretty because I might be with a dude and we mm-hmm. might get jiggy later, yeah, um, I'm wearing the pretty foundational ones, mm-hmm. and they do have sizes that fit me. That's good. So, do they fit all the way? <laughs> They're probably popping out. I mean, typically you're not supposed to have that bump out. Yeah. You yeah, know, the muffin top or the the whatever the you boot, call the boot muffin, exactly, yeah. exactly. You're not supposed to have that in the correct fitting bra, mm-hmm. um, but they do look good and they fit great, and you yeah. know they're pretty. So, are have you thought about ever going bigger? Or are you at a size that you're good with? <clears throat> um, I think, I think due to my age, I'm done. Okay. If I did anything, I'd probably pull them out. But that's much later because mm-hmm. uh, I'm not ready for that. Mm-hmm. Um, unless, of course, I had some health. Yeah, there was a know, different. There was a, another that's, issue. That's different. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I like them. They're, they're beautiful. I think they match my body shape. Mm-hmm. Um, if I lost an extreme amount of weight that I can't foresee doing unless I was on drugs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Know, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean extreme. Yeah, yeah. Like I've worked out before and got down to 170, 174 is about really where I'm good. Mm -hmm. I look beautiful, muscular, you know, blah, blah, blah. But anything, like when I entered the industry, I was 124 pounds. Oh, okay. Yeah. A little different. A little bit, yeah. A little different. (laughs) And I think um, if I got down to that, it would have to be drug use. Yeah, which hopefully you don't. And if I did that, I think this size would look like a 
toothpick with, you know, yeah. something. With two, with two like, right. you know, melons, melons on top on of it. Yeah. <laughs> it would not look right. But I think my body shape, it looks like it, it, it's natural-ish. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah, I, it, I, it I, I know what you mean. Yeah. The, the, dimensionally. Yeah. So, all right. Well, you know, I, hate, to hate to, hate, I know. Because we've, oh, God, this and is And see, such... now you have every reason to have me back on because there's a ton of things that we didn't even finish. I know. I know. There were things that I wanted to, to get to you with, and we just didn't. <laughs> but yeah. I'm really happy, though, because this kind of give a, you know, that, that kind of introductory. And then we. Do you do interviews longer than an hour? Uh, right now, I, I only do an hour just because yeah. that's what because that's the uh, that's the time I can afford. I mean, I, gotcha. I'd go longer if I could. for the studio. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. But uh, but yeah, I mean, eventually, if if I could, uh, you know, do longer interviews, I would. But it's probably smarter to just have somebody back on. Yeah. Well, because then that gives me another episode. Yeah. So. Not only that, but I think if you had return people, you could have multi, You could have that would be when I would introduce two people. Yeah. Yeah, and so that's, like yeah, you, if about, you yeah. had me and somebody else that you'd had on before mm -hmm. that, then there's like this huge conversation yeah. an hour will go by in the blink of an eye. Like that. <laughs> and eventually I might do like, maybe like live streams where we actually do a live thing cool and then too. maybe take questions as yeah. we're, as we're doing it. That'd from. be very cool. So anyway, though, Ryan, I mean, you've been Thank such you a, for such a fantastic me. guest. I can't, I, you know, we could, we could probably talk all day yeah. and I definitely, yes. we're definitely going to, you're definitely going to come back, obviously. Yes. So September, October. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely make that happen. It'll be a so, whole different thing then, too. Yeah. And uh, again, I just so happy, so thankful. Thank you. So, and to all of you out there in huge boob land, we will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>